Chapter 3, Matter and Energy. So, what is matter? And that's a different question than what is the matter, right? What's the matter implies there's a problem. What is matter? Um, we can say that matter is any substance that has mass and occupies volume. Um, so give me an example of something that's matter, that's in this room. You are matter, yes. The chairs. The ceiling. What about... What about the light that's being projected? Is that matter? No. Light is a form of energy. How about the emotions that somebody might be feeling? Are those matter? No. They matter, but they aren't matter, right? So matter can exist in one of three physical states, um, solid, liquid, and gas. And then there's usually somebody that says, yes, but what about plasmas? Well, there is a fourth one, but we don't talk about it in general chemistry, so we're not going to talk about it. So let's talk about the physical states of matter. Um, you should definitely read this part in your textbook as well. But these, I'm just going to go over the pictures on the table. So three different properties, shape, volume, and compressibility, are going to be different between solids, liquids, and gases and we need to be able to identify what they are. Um, water is a substance that we encounter in our daily lives in all three states of matter. When it's a solid, we call it ice. When it's a liquid, we call it water, and we take a bath in it or we drink it when we're thirsty. And we also encounter it in the gas state. When you boil water, steam comes off, and that is water in the gas state. So some of these properties we can remember by just thinking about what would water do? So solids have a fixed shape, a fixed volume, and they're basically not compressible. So think about an ice cube. If you move an ice cube from one container to another, does its shape change? No, it stays the same shape. Solids have fixed shapes. Does its volume change when you put it in a bigger container? No, it stays the same. It's the same old ice cube. Can you squeeze an ice cube and make it smaller without melting it? No. It's not compressible. A liquid, liquid water. If you pour water from a tall skinny cup into a shallow dish, does its shape change? Yes, it does. Liquids have variable shapes. They will take on the shape of their container. Does the volume of the water change when you pour it from one container to another? No. It may look like it's changed because our, our perception of how big something is can be distorted by what shape it's in. But the volume of the water doesn't change. Is water compressible? No. It pretty much is not. Liquids are not compressible. And that's an important thing for hydraulic systems. Hydraulic brakes in your car. You push your foot on the, on the brake pedal. It applies pressure to the brake fluid in the tube. And the, the liquid is not compressible. And so it transfers that pressure back to the wheels and, and puts on the brakes and slows down your car. When you get gas bubbles, air bubbles, in your brake lines, then your brakes get soft. Because gases have significant compressibility. You can take a gas and compress it a great deal. Have you ever gotten one of those little helium canisters and filled up balloons for a party? Think about the volume of that canister and then think about how big the balloons were that you got out of that canister. The gas was compressed. And when you let it out, it expanded and filled up all these balloons and now it has a much larger volume. You could do the opposite to it. You can take the large volume and compress it down. And that's what they did when they put the helium in the cylinder. So gases have significant compressibility. Gases also have variable volumes and variable shapes. When you put a gas in a larger container, it expands to fill the container. Okay? What if you had something like, um, what's something that's really stinky? Name something really smelly. 
skunk. Let, let's go with skunk. Cow farts are really stinky too, but um, it's hard to think of putting a cow, cow fart in a bottle. Um, so what if you extracted some skunk spray? Or what if, you know, I know, okay, you got sprayed by a skunk, and you put your shirt into a, a glass jar. The smell that you smell is the gas being given off. It's a volatile compound, and it comes in, into a gas form. So here's your shirt in this container. That container is full with nasty skunk smell, right? If we put that <coughs> container in the center of the room and opened the lid, would that smelly gas spread out and fill up the whole room? It sure would. Gases expand to fill their containers. They're variable in shape and in volume. And so if we look at these guys, we see that liquids and solids have some things in common, but they're not all three the same. And gases have, have variable shape in common with liquids, but not all three properties are the same. And another thing that's very different is the relationship between the particles. Here we have um, an illustration of water molecules. Let's look at the gas first. So water is one oxygen, which is the red ball, and two hydrogen atoms. And we see these illustrations typically for water, and they look, they look to me like little Mickey Mouse heads, right? Little red and white Mickey Mouse heads. So if you like Disney, you might like that. In the gas state, those particles, those molecules, are separated from each other. There's a lot of space between them. And that's why gases are compressible, because you can squeeze those together and get them closer and make smaller volume. And they're also free to move about, and they're not connected to each other in any way. In the liquid state, the particles are closer together. We might say they're touchingly close but they're free to move around. We can't squish them together anymore because they're already about as close as they can get. And so that's why they're not compressible. Their volume is fixed. But their shape is variable because they're moving around. I think of them as swimming because you could swim in a liquid, right? And in a solid now, they are still about the same distance apart, but now they're fixed in position. So this brings me to the student analogy for the states of matter. Currently, you guys are in the physical state of students. Okay? You're sitting in your seats. You're not moving around, right? You're not moving relative to each other. The person on your left five minutes ago is still on your left. You're not moving around. That's what solids do. Are you sitting absolutely still, though? No, you're moving a little bit, aren't you? Hopefully, you're breathing. <laughs> breathing, blinking, maybe taking notes. Or, you know, shifting, looking at your watch, checking Facebook, I hope not. But you're moving, right? Even solid particles are moving. And that, that motion is where we get the temperature. Kinetic energy, the energy of motion, is, a, is related to the temperature. Um, in the liquid state, um, it works better for a lab class, but... Imagine that we have chemistry lab, which we don't. In chemistry lab, the students are walking around the room. They're getting a beaker. They're going to the sink. They're getting a chemical. We're still in an enclosed space. We're still close together. But now everyone's moving about. That's what a liquid is doing. And the gas state is when class is over and the doors open and you guys go off, right? And some of you go to Clovis and some of you go to Merced, and some of you go to Parlier, and you just go off in all different directions. And that's what a gas does, okay? Gases have more energy than liquids. Liquids have more energy than solids. And you think about the temperature. Does ice exist at a high, medium, or low temperature? It, it's a low temperature, right? It's gonna be cold, because these particles are not moving as much. How do you melt ice? You heat it up. You give it more energy. You raise the temperature and it melts. And if you raise the temperature further, you'll get to the gas state. So 
we can have changes between these states. And these state changes have names. Many of them you know, but we need to make sure you know all of them. So if you take a solid and convert it to a liquid, we call that melting. If you take the liquid and freeze it, you make a solid, right? Liquids can evaporate, so that's vaporizing, becoming a vapor, into the gas state. Or a gas can condense into a liquid. If you have a, a glass of ice water on a humid day, the outside of the glass gets wet, right? Is your glass leaking? No. It's cold, and the water vapor, the water in the gas state that's in the air, comes in contact with that cold surface, and it condenses. Gas to liquid is condensation. And then we can also have um, transitions between the gas and the solid state directly. These are not as common. Um, things like dry ice. Dry ice is called dry ice because it doesn't melt. It, there's never any water to make things wet. Therefore, it's dry ice. It's frozen carbon dioxide. It sublimes. It goes directly to the gas state. And the opposite of that is the gas going directly to a solid, which is deposition. Okay, so you should be aware of those terms. Going from solid to liquid to gas, we're having increasing temperature, which you can remember just by thinking about water. Any questions?